For centuries, humans have wondered if we are alone in the universe. Kepler, NASA's first mission to find habitable planets similar to Earth, may provide the answer. By the end of Kepler's three-year mission, it will give us a good idea of how common other Earths are in the Milky Way galaxy. This will be an important step in answering the age-old question, are we alone? The Kepler satellite is equipped with the largest camera ever launched into space, a 95 megapixel array of charge-coupled devices similar to those in everyday digital cameras. But Kepler lacks the ability to take pictures of the planets it will observe. Rather, the satellite is equipped with a device called a photometer used to measure the brightness of light. Kepler's photometer is so powerful that from its view in space, it could detect one person in a small town turning off a porch light at night. For four years, Kepler will continuously measure the brightness of stars similar to the sun and send information back to science teams on Earth. It works like this. When a planet moves in front of a star, it blocks a portion of that star's light. Kepler records this transit of planets across the faces of stars with sensors on the photometer and provides the science teams with raw data that will allow them to determine the planet's size as well as the size of its orbit. Launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base March 6, 2009, the Kepler satellite was specially designed to fulfill a specific mission. Other than the small reaction wheels used to maintain the pointing and an ejectable cover, Kepler uses no moving or deployable parts. This design enhances the pointing stability and overall reliability of the spacecraft. Likewise, the observatory's place in space will allow it to watch the same stars constantly throughout its mission, something observatories such as NASA's Hubble Space Telescope cannot do. The area of our galaxy scientists have chosen to observe is in the constellation Cygnus, the Swan. Scientists estimate the area contains over 100,000 stars similar to our own Sun. Through the surveillance of these stars, Kepler will explore the structure and diversity of planetary systems within our galaxy, with a focus on detecting Earth-sized planets. To do this, Kepler surveys the solar neighborhood to find and characterize planets in or near the habitable zone, the green ring shown here, that scientists have defined as the distance from a star where liquid can exist on a planet's surface. Hotter stars have a habitable zone located far away from the star, while the habitable zone of a cooler star is relatively close to it. Temperatures on planets located too close to a star are far too high for any living thing to survive. Like our own planet Mercury, these worlds would have poisonous atmospheres and fiery landscapes. Not a nice place to make a home. Planets that are outside the habitable zone are too cold to sustain life, much like the once planet Pluto. Low temperatures on these planets keeps water in its frozen form, ensuring an icy environment far too chilly for any living organism. Planets within the habitable zone, however, have water in liquid form. These planets would be similar to Earth. They would have large oceans, ever-changing weather systems, and atmospheres that would allow them to sustain life. Scientists hope that by observing the planets in these zones, they may be able to increase our understanding of how planets form, the characteristics of stars with terrestrial planets, and the structure of individual planetary systems. If Kepler detects many habitable Earth-sized planets, it could mean the universe is full of life. This discovery would lead the way for scientists to conduct a more extensive search for life on other planets.